Hi everyone, this is Matthew and I am doing an unboxing of a Panasonic Lumix LX5 point and shoot camera. Um, I have been asked by several friends for recommendations uh, for point and shoot cameras as well as uh, DSLRs. Um, when it comes to the point and shoot, I really try to tailor the recommendations based on the needs of the person asking. Um, but for me, um, when I talk about having a point and shoot, I need something that, um, a, a camera that has a little more capability um, to come close to, if not really matching, uh, some of the capability of my DSLRs. And really what I'm talking about is the ability to shoot in RAW format, uh, as well as have um, good low light capability um, and handle noise um, in some of those low light situations well. So I did some research and uh, I know a friend of mine I think has the LX4 and she's been very happy with it. Um, for comparison's sake, at this, I hate to say this, but at, at kind of this level of camera, this is considered a high-end point-and-shoot camera, uh, comparable models would be a Canon G12 or a, Penis, uh, excuse me, a Nikon P7000. Um, all of, of these cameras retail for about $500. However, um, you, know, you can find most of these cameras either in your local camera shop, Best Buy, or um, online through uh, b &H Photo, uh, Crutchfield, uh, Adorama, uh, and of course Amazon. And in fact, speaking of Amazon, um, I saw this camera just the other day uh, a, a, an email popped up from uh, one of my favorite websites, TheVerge.com, uh, and it highlighted the fact that this was on sale for $269. So I really couldn't pass that up. Uh, today is Saturday, December 10th, 2011, and Amazon has the price now at $348. So you're still saving $150 off full retail price. Um, if you look around, you might be able to catch um, a new, not refurbished uh, LX5 or uh, one of the other models for uh, a good price. But I really jumped on that 269 and I'm pretty happy about it. So let's let's get into the box um, as your standard uh, information on the top, which tries to highlight some of the most important things. But uh, I'll talk about them uh, inside. So uh, let's get in. Uh, here you have uh, Panasonic Lumix Photo Fun Studio 5.0 HD Edition. Uh, I haven't really looked at Panasonic's software because it's the first Panasonic Lumix camera I've had, but I have my own editing software. Um, I may look at it for the video piece because I don't really do a lot with video, but uh, I'm thinking about doing more. Um, I, I will say this. If you don't have video or uh, photo or video processing software, you, you may want to take a look at this uh, and use it. Um, but I would also suggest that um, if you're taking you know, basic um, shots, if you're not really doing a lot with RAW, you're using the camera because you want the image quality, but you're really not going to shoot in RAW format, I would suggest um, getting a program online that's free, like Google Picasa, or you can find, I think, a free version of a, a kind of a really stripped down version of Photoshop that I think you can actually do online. Uh, or you can pick up Photoshop Elements for about $100 and, or $80, actually. Um, I have uh, Lightroom 3 uh, and use Nikon NX2 software that uh, is kind of old now. But anyway, um, I, I usually toss these aside, but. Um, I thought that it was worth mentioning that you might want to consider using this, particularly if this is your first camera where you're going to be doing more processing of images. So here you have the um, operating instructions in the manual on disk. Um, you also have printed materials. Uh, I'm a manual reader, so I will be going to this before I actually fire up the camera. Or I may fire it up and, and kind of go through, but uh, my wife teases me because I read manuals before I actually use things. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I, I, you know, I think irrespective of how competent you are, you're either a manual reader or you're not. It doesn't mean one thing, one side or the other, but 
there, there you go. Uh, inside the box here you have a strap, and your battery charger. Obviously that means you have a battery, a lithium ion battery, a battery case. Now you may ask why you need a case or why you have a case for the battery, um, <laughs> presumably because it would be in the camera. Um, one, because you, you just may store it and you want to make sure you keep track of the battery. But I'll just use this as an opportunity to suggest that you may want to go online and look for a second battery. Um, particularly if you use this camera for travel, uh, and really that's any camera, whether you use a, a DSLR or a point and shoot, it's always good to have backup batteries. Uh, there's nothing worse than being out taking some pictures um, either on a shoot or if you're just traveling and the battery dies. Um, and with these cameras now, the point and shoots, uh, a lot of people use a mix of video and uh, the uh, images. So if you're using video, um, you'd be surprised how quickly that can wear down your battery. It's good to have a second battery and keep this close, uh, filled with the second battery, charged, of course. Um, all right. So also here we have cables. We have a micro, you can see that, a micro USB to USB and a micro USB to standard AV outs. Um, you'll notice a, um, You'll notice here that there's no red input, which should clearly tell you that this records in mono, not stereo. So you have your video and your audio out. Um, not that big of a deal for me, and I can't tell you whether the other models have stereo recording or not. However, if stereo recording is important to you, um, <laughs> clearly this is not probably the, the, the camera for you. Uh, for me right now, uh, that's just not that big of a deal. So let's get this out of the way. Nothing else in the box. Here is the camera itself. Um, and so here we are. This is the Lumix LX5. Now I don't have incredibly big hands, but I mean, it's big enough, I guess. Um, but I mean, here you are. This is palm of my hand. Um, trying to look around for something comparable. I mean, here's a um, standard flip cell phone. Um, so you can see it's not that much bigger than the, the height of a, a standard flip phone, which goes comfortably in your pocket, aside from the lens itself, which obviously would bulge in your pocket. But um, this should give you a sense of uh, being able to comfortably, more comfortably carry this in your pocket than, say, the, the um, Canon G12. Uh, I find the G10 to be a great camera, but it is very bulky, almost about a full pound. This camera is, um, uh, I think, less than a half a pound. Um, it's actually nine ounces, so just a little over half a pound. So uh, let's go over some of the features. Here on the back, you have a three-inch diagonal, uh, three-inch screen, uh, your controls here, and your selector dial. The, um, I mean, if you're really into this, the, um, the screen output is 460 dots, 460,000 dots. Uh, that's pretty much even with the Canon G12. The Nikon P7000, I believe, has 751,000 or some much higher number. Um, so you, you'll get a better um, you know, resolution, pixel density, uh, if you will, with the, um, the Nikon. Uh, quite honestly, I'm only using the screen for reference. I'm not using it to view the images uh, like I would on a screen um to to re really pay attention to all the details so the resolution of the screen is not quite as important to me however when you want to see some of those fine details it probably is nice to have uh, greater resolution uh, you'll notice here that there there's a little cap here but there is no viewfinder uh, if a viewfinder is important to you then you may want to again consider a different camera um, I always use a viewfinder on my DSLR cameras. I almost never use it on the uh, Canon G10. Um, it, it's just probably because it's so small, it's just not comfortable to look through. Uh, one of the nice features with the uh, Lumix LX5 is that you can buy an accessory uh, viewfinder. It's an electronic optical viewfinder that goes here into the hot shoe. 
um, and so it stands up a little higher so you're, you're up here and it's larger so that probably is a little more comfortable. Uh, if you need a viewfinder and you really like this camera, I would suggest that you consider picking that up. Um, so again, you have the controls here. On the top here, you have, and I don't know how focused this is, but um, this camera goes in both auto and manual mode. So here you have uh, full manual where you can adjust both the shutter and uh, aperture. You have shutter priority, which means it will adjust the, sh um, you adjust the shutter speed and the camera adjusts the aperture. Conversely, you can adjust the aperture and the camera fixes the shutter. Priority mode, where it, it's kind of quasi-auto. It pretty much takes the best mode or the best settings available based on the light and the distance of the object you're shooting. Auto mode, you know, some of these scene modes, color palette, uh, custom modes, and video. Uh, over here, you have your um, control for um, telephoto and widening your frame as well as your shutter button. You have a dedicated record button for video and there's your off and on, uh, off on button for the camera itself. Over here you have um, an open button and as you'll see it's for your flash. Let's turn it that way. Um, I tried out a couple Canon point and shoots a few years ago and one of the things that really annoyed me was that the, uh, the flash would always stay up there was no way to put it down and make it stay down so I appreciate that this one has a dedicated control. Um, here you have your aspect ratio normally when you're shooting um, with the camera for film or for images you're going to shoot one to one. Uh, some of these seem to be much more for video you have your 4x3, 3x2 or 16.9 your wide ratio aspect when you think about you know, high definition. Speaking of high definition your camera, uh, the, the video option on this uh, LX5 shoots at up to 720p HD at either 30 or 60 frames per second, which is significantly higher than some of the other models that are uh, available now. You can um, find HD recording on uh, the G12 or the P7000, but you'll be getting um, 720p resolution at 24 frames per second so uh, it'll be nice to see um, the increased frame per second to see how well this process is smoothly processes um, HD video particularly when you have a, a lot of motion as you see my hand coming through here when you have that motion the the increased frames per second should um, should come in handy so here we have the uh, Leica lens it is um, an f2.0 to 3.3. Um, really what that means is you'll get some, uh, you should have some good uh, luck with low light situation when you have that uh, 2.0 f-stop uh, up to 3.3, which also means then when you extend through your focal range, you still should have uh, some relatively um, good results with, uh, with, with less light. As far as the focal range itself, it's 24 to 90 millimeters. If you're looking for a point and shoot that has uh, greater uh, focal length, then you probably, it, at this level of camera, again, the high end point and shoot, you'd want to move over to the G12 or the P7000, which has, I think, the largest um, uh, zoom capability of these. But again, these cameras, I hate to keep using this term, high end, but that's just how they're, they're classified. The high end uh, cameras really are not. Um, made for a lot of uh, extensive zoom, the, the super zooms. If you want a lot of zoom capability or much more of an all-in-one camera as opposed to a very specific use for this for uh, quality images, um, you can still get very good images from some super zoom cameras from any of these uh, manufacturers, Canon, Nikon, um, Panasonic Lumix, uh, Samsung also makes some good super zooms. Um, just some technical um, things as well with the shooting modes. Um, you have the flash that I mentioned. You have a flash range of 7.2 meters or roughly 20, 20, a little over 21 feet. Um, <laughs> again, point and shoot cameras, the, the flash, is it, it might as well be an explosion because they're usually just too bright when they're up close and they're too dim when they're too far. So um, take that for what it, it is. You can adjust... Um, 
the the expo or the the flash compensation in the menus. Uh, in terms of your shutter settings, you have a maximum shutter t uh, length of 60 seconds, so you can hold the shutter open for a minute to take some nice um, long exposure shots, uh, particularly nice at night and things like that. Um, and then also you can go all the way up to one four thousandths of a second, which is nice. You can really work on capturing um, some high-speed images there. The macro mode on the camera takes you down to a minimum focal range uh, uh, distance, excuse me, of one centimeter, which is nice. I do a lot of um, macro shooting, so the ability to get really close um, is helpful. Um, you can also do manual focus on this, and again, I don't know how this is focusing for you, but um, over here you have autofocus, you have autofocus for your macro mode, and then you have manual focus. Again, because I do a lot of macro photography, uh, the ability to fine-tune the, um, the focus is, is, a, is a plus. Over here you have your uh, HDMI out as well as the micro USB. Um, so it's nice to see those um, available. Um, what it's worth over here, you just have the camera strap. On the bottom, you have your standard mount for tripods and your battery door and your SD SD high capacity card slot. And that has an actually has an open and shut lever there, which is nice because a lot of them you just push it over, and then when you push it back, it snaps back in. This one actually makes you focus on tightening it up. So, um, a few things in terms of what the camera does and does not have. Well, I guess I've talked about what it does have. What it does not have um, is time-lapse, uh, the ability to do time-lapse uh, photography. Uh, it doesn't have GPS. Uh, there's no capability to use a remote. Um, the screen is not touchscreen. It's all menu-driven from the controls. Uh, and as I mentioned as well, it does not have an articulated screen, so it's a fixed screen. It's not really as important to me because I, um, you know, I, I use the camera kind of on the fly. Um, I don't really use it for for more serious shots. I, I'll come back with a DSLR if I have an opportunity. Um, this may be important to you though, because if you're taking some shots, and for instance, if it's hard for you to get down at an angle. Uh, but you want to take the, the image straight on, but you, you're you here, you could actually get down here and articulate the screen up on a different model like the G12 or the P7000 and see it from here and take the camera, uh, the image straight out. Same thing is if um, you're trying to take the picture over someone's head, so you need to go up high, you can articulate the screen down and, and look up and see it while holding the camera uh, straight on at the subject. Uh, I'm I'm six three, so I generally don't have that problem. I can hold the camera up pretty high, and still see what I'm shooting. And I'm also just very familiar with kind of aiming and seeing what I uh, getting a shot I want without having to actually always look through the screen. Um, I think that is it. I uh, probably <laughs> given you far more than you needed to know or hear it for an unboxing. But I guess I won't call this just an unboxing. It's a bit of a a walkthrough of the features as well. So uh, I apologize for the <laughs> almost 20 minute uh, so-called unboxing of the Panasonic Lumix LX5, but there you have it. If you have any questions, please uh, shoot them down below in the comments. And I also plan to uh, get this fired up soon and take some images. And I will write a blog post about my first impressions in terms of the image quality and ease of use of the camera. So if you're looking for a good point and shoot camera, and when I say good, I get, you know, they're, it's relative. There, there are a lot of good cameras. If you're looking for a high-end camera that has capabilities such as uh, raw picture format, uh, capability working in low light, a very solid lens, um, you know, nice features, very solid build, you see you have your, your kind of your hand grip here, which is nice to have that little notch out there. Um, then I would definitely uh, suggest you consider the Panasonic Lumix LX5, but don't rule out the um, Nikon P7000 or Canon G12. All will 
really, I think, do a, a very good job for you. Uh, and some of it just comes down to personal preference. So hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned.